Hey, babes. Oh, let's move this down a little bit. Let's move this up a little bit. Hey, babes. Welcome to Face Your Cocktail Hour. How are you? Um, we're just coming off of like Valentine's Day week. So let me know in the comments. How was your Valentine's Day? How are you feeling? Let me... Here, let me... Clear. Okay, that's a little bit better. Okay. So, welcome to Fancy Girl Cocktail Hour. If this is your first time, so every Monday I go live with a topic and we just have a little chat. We have a little cocktail, maybe a mocktail, maybe just whatever you're in the mood to drink. And yeah, so that's what we are doing. I am so excited. This topic is so juicy and like, first off, let me tell you. The Fancy Girl Guide is all about helping you to create the life of the dreams, get everything you came for, get everything you want, because the girls deserve to get what they want to get. You know what I mean? So I love this topic. I have my notes and everything. Let me open up. So the topic is, oh, what's the topic? How to use femininity to get everything you want. So we're going to be talking about feminine energy. What exactly is feminine feminine energy? Because it's like such a, you know, when things get kind of like super overused or like really trendy, really popular, it kind of like takes away from like what it actually is. So we're going to chat about that. Um, I am actually not having a, a cocktail tonight, but I am having some, it's actually a lot, some Good Belly juice. This is Good Belly probiotic juice. Um which this is such a good juice. It's um 20 billion probiotics per serving. So this is great. Um, I just mentioned this in my hygiene video on like how to prevent odor and like how to just smell good and be like fresh and delicious. So um, make sure you check that out after this live. Does this look clear? Let me know in the comments um, if this is, if it's clear, cause it looks kind of foggy on my end and I don't know if it's me or, no, I think that just must be the, the way that it looks. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into the topic because this is just so juicy and I'm so excited about it. So the topic again is how to use femininity to get everything that you want. So first off, we're going to talk about what is femininity, right? So obviously femininity is the balance to masculinity. So we're going to talk about these two things like together. And um, so femininity is the energy of being like people will say like, oh, it's being in your body. So what it is, is femininity is being in your body and masculinity is being in your head. It's being in your mind, right? So femininity is existing. It's attracting. It is alluring. Whereas masculinity is um, pursuing. It is um, like going after something. It is, um, planning and analyzing and thinking, whereas femininity is more, um, it's softer. It is gentle. It is ease where masculinity is hard. It is, um, like force it's power and it's power in a forceful way. Whereas femininity is power in a um, non-resistant way. So when we talk about femininity and being in your body, so what that means is, I'm going to use an example because this is probably going to be the best way to like fully understand it, right? So think about a little girl, like femininity and masculinity, little girl, little boy. So little girls everybody starts off with femininity. So femininity is the essence of like creativity. It is playfulness. It is lightness. It is, you know, fun. It's easy. It is um, being taken care of. Whereas masculinity is something that has to be developed, which is why so, when, so many women can have the challenge of 
saying like they became masculine or just becoming masculine or feeling like they have to put on masculinity in order to succeed or in order to compete um, in like male dominated spaces, right? Whereas femininity is the starting point. It is the essence of being. So if you are going to be feminine, you learn to be, you learn to enjoy, you learn to, like, if you're being, right, like, in this moment, I am existing in this moment, talking to you, I'm not thinking about what I'm going to do later, I'm not planning ahead for anything in this moment. Now, is there a time for that? Sure. But when you spend your time in your femininity, it is, allowing it it is existing it is resting um versus planning forcing create like trying to um go after something pursuing something it is not that it is resting attracting allowing like that is femininity so now i'm going to give you three tips on how to use your femininity to get everything you want so the very first thing and i'm gonna tell you i'm starting with this thing because if you do this first that will allow space for the other two things which are really like the things that you are actually um going to do to create whatever it is that you want or to attract whatever it is you want so the very first thing you have to do is to let go of desperation now what i mean by let go of desperation is Think about if you feel desperate for something, you have, it's like this anxious energy. It is this like, I got to figure it out. I got to make it happen. I got to, you know, it's very like, you know, that versus not being desperate is understanding that things will be or they will not be. And I am not defined by these outside things I am defined by what is on the inside which is me being me being in my body that is truth that is where I am that is who I am not these things outside of myself that I have to force or I have to navigate or I have to put together I have to um really try to um let's see I have forcing obsession um, thinking instead of feeling. So that is what desperation does. So think about like, we're going to use like an example from like a movie, right? So if you think about, or just from life, if you think about like a woman in a movie who is feminine, she's gorgeous, she's beautiful. When she walks into the room, she's not going up to the very first man trying to get his attention. The attention turns to her. She's drawing people in. She's captivating people. She is existing in herself, but that in itself is the power that she is demanding. It is like, this is who I am and you have no choice but to look over at me and like want to come and see about what I'm doing, right? Whereas if you've ever been out and like at a club or something and a guy... Like you can tell the men that are like desperate to try to take somebody home or desperate to try to get somebody's number because they're going to come over. They're going to be like super close up on you. They're going to be in your face. They're going to be talking all loud in your face. Like they buy you a drink. They're like shadowing you for the rest of the night. That is the essence of desperation, trying to force something, not allowing things to naturally develop as they will, you know, versus the femininity is allowing things to come to you. It is existing and understanding what I desire and allowing that to come to me. So if you let go of desperation, that will prevent you from getting the wrong thing because desperation a hundred times out of a hundred times is going to get you the absolute thing that you do not want. Anytime I have ever been desperate for something, it did not go well. Like anytime, I'm going to give you all um, an example. Um, and I'm actually going to use this example for the rest of the live. Um, so 
there was so last year um i went to go see beyonce two times um and there was an opportunity for me to go see beyonce a third time or not really an opportunity but i really wanted to go see her again and it was the last show and i was like oh my god i want to go so bad like i was literally just so desperate to go but it really wasn't in my budget so it was like okay like oh i just gotta go i gotta go i gotta see beyonce again and so i ended up essentially getting scammed um by somebody who said that they had like these tickets like oh yeah I work for this place you know you can just pay me this and then you all will get the tickets or whatever and I end up getting scammed and when I think back on it the reason why I attracted this person to scam me is because I was literally so desperate and so willing to like I don't say do anything because I wasn't like selling a kidney or anything like that. You know what I mean? But I was just so like, I just wanted it so bad that even when all of the signs said that it like wasn't going to work out, I wasn't willing to let it go. I was willing to like essentially let my desperation overshadow my common sense. Because when I look back on it, it's like all of the signs were there that I was going to get scammed. Like literally there was no way that I wasn't going to get scammed in this situation. But in the situation, when you're desperate for something, you will overlook the obvious signs that this is not for you, which is like the third concert just wasn't for me. Like seeing Beyonce two times was enough. In the grand scheme of things, six months later, looking back on it, going to see Beyonce one more time was not going to be like super life changing. It really wasn't. But in the moment, I was so desperate for this experience that I totally overlooked the fact that it wasn't something that I truly needed or wasn't something that was really in alignment with where I was in the moment. Fast forward to last week. So I um spoke on a panel for a Black Love panel at a university, um, which was incredible. So there was three um it was two married couples an engaged couple and then it was um me as a single woman and it was a single man um so I speak on this panel and then after I speak on the panel I end up going to Drake concert I had no plans I had no ticket I had literally no plans other than the fact that I really wanted to go and so what it was was when I found out that Drake was coming in concert originally when he first came in concert I said to myself oh my god I really want to go to this concert um, but I recognized that it wasn't really in my budget for what I really wanted to do at the time. Um, and I just had other priorities, which is not to say that I could have not spent the money, but again, I would have been doing it out of desperation. And so it's so funny because I was talking to my friend, Nicole, and like two days before the concert, I was at her house and we were just chatting. I asked her, she was going and she was like, oh no. And I said, and she asked me if I was going, I was like, you know, I don't have tickets, but my heart is open to whatever, you know, God has for me. And literally in that energy, it's like, I don't necessarily have plans for this. I'm not forcing my way into it. Like I'm not necessarily going to go and buy my ticket or, you know, I'm not looking for somebody to buy my ticket. If it happens, it happens. And if it doesn't, I'll be okay. I'm not afraid of missing out because I understand that anything that is in alignment with me is going to come to me. It's going to be mine. I don't have to force it. I don't have to be desperate for it. I don't have to rob Peter to pay Paul. I don't have to do any of that because in my femininity, I understand that Whatever my desires are, I could put those out and I can let them go and I can let those flow back to me. I don't need to put them out and then hustle and then make it happen. And then I just don't need to do that. So this is the energy that I had. Anytime somebody would say like, oh, are you going to go see Drake? I would say like, oh, like I don't necessarily have plans, but my heart is open to it. My heart is open to whatever you know, God has for me, like, I'm excited to go. And I would think about the concert, like, oh, I'm so excited to go to the concert. But not, I never felt like, oh my God, if I don't go to this concert, I'm going to be so upset. Like, and that's the way that I felt like with the Beyonce concert. It was like, oh my God, if I can't see her this third time, I'm just, I just don't know what I'm going to do. Again, desperation versus attracting and allowing so I was in more of a masculine energy field with trying to force and maneuver and, oh, uh, Elia, Elia says, hi, hey, babe. Thanks so much for joining Fancy Girl Cocktail Hour. Um, 
so what was I saying? So in that energy, you can see just from those two experiences, I was more of in a masculine space of like, oh my God, I got to make this happen. Like, I got to do this. Like, oh my God, if I, if I don't do this, like, I just don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to be so sad. I'm going to be like, oh, I'm just versus this other energy was, I, I desire this. I want this. Um, but I understand that whatever is for me is going to come to me effortlessly. So I ended up, long story short, I went to the panel, had a great panel. And also let me add that I was also walking in my purpose because you all know I write a blog, I create content here all about helping to elevate your life. And so me speaking on this panel, I'm speaking to literal college students, giving them advice on my experience, what I have learned, what are the important takeaways of like being a single woman and like going forward in life, getting the desired relationship that I, I truly want. And so me walking in my purpose allowed space for the opportunity for me to receive the, the, the desired outcome that I was looking for, which obviously was going to go see Drake because I did. <laughs> so that is the example um, that I wanted to use about forcing and obsessing and then thinking instead of feeling. So let go of the desperation for whatever it is. And I know that it, it can be hard to let go of the desperation because, you know, maybe it's a job that you really want. Maybe it is a relationship that you really want. Maybe it is, you know, you really want to have a baby or you really want to go on a trip. And it's like, if you are in a space of like, oh my God, I just got to make this happen. You know, I'm willing to make bad decisions and put myself in a bad place in order for this to happen. That's very much masculine energy. And every single time that I have operated out of masculine energy, even when I did the thing that I wanted to do, it ended up not being what I wanted to do. Like it ended up not being um, to my standard or satisfactory or it ended up causing more stress than it was worth the experience versus me being in my feminine energy and just allowing things to come to me every single time. It is even better than I expected. The seats that I had at the concert, like had I forced it and been like, you know what? I'm just going to buy my ticket. I probably wouldn't even have had the seats that I had. You know what I mean? Like I probably would not have been so close that I could literally see Drake's face on the stage. Um, I probably would not have been able to even fully enjoy the experience because I would have been thinking about like, is this worth the money that I spent? Like, is this, um, or not, well, yeah, not even necessarily worth the money that I spent, but like, is this worth the time that I'm spending here? Is this, it's like, no, when things come to you, you know that it's for you versus you forcing it and it not really being for you and you just pushing yourself into a situation. So let go of the desperation. Number two, let me get a little juice. Are you guys drinking anything? Are you having a cocktail? Sorry if you can hear that super loud noise. That's my dryer. Um, <laughs> and it, it literally goes on for so long. So next is going to be, number two is going to be know what you want. So um, Alana Donson said, hey, hon, hope you had a wonderful day. Thank you so much, babe. I did have an incredible day, actually. Super productive. Um, and I just felt good all day long and super excited about it. How was your day? Let me know in the comments, everybody. How was your day? Because I really want to know um, how you babes are feeling. And I'm hoping that this live will help you to have better days as you shift your energy fully into that femininity so that you can get what you're looking for. So number two is know what you want. Now, knowing what you want is very much an experience of you being in your body, being in touch with your feelings, being in touch with who you truly are. Because a lot of times when you are not in your femininity and you are kind of existing in more of a masculine space, the things that you think that you want are not really what you want. They are what it looks like you should want. Um, it's like that, oh, I, I really want this big career, um, you know, 
and I want to make all this money. But what you really, truly probably want on the inside is security. Um, you want a sense of accomplishment. You want, um, and not to say that the career won't give that to you, but sometimes it's not the career that you truly want. And it's the feelings that you're going to get from the career that you're truly looking for. Um, so when you put that into perspective and, and know like, okay, what I truly want is this desired security. I want the freedom to travel. I want the, um, support of a partner, um, or, and not necessarily, oh, I want a man that is this tall, that is this, that is a masculine thing. That's very like, I'm trying to control the situation where it's like, you know, a man that is six feet can treat you just as good as a man that's six three. Like, you know what I mean? Like your femininity is what the feeling that you are looking to get out of the satisfaction that you're looking to get out of something, not necessarily this specific thing. Now it can be a specific thing, um, but in knowing what you want, you need to know what you want, but you need to let go of the desire to control how you get the thing that you want. And you need to let go of the desire to dictate exactly how it needs to be. Um, and so those two examples are kind of, I feel like the best examples of like, you know, a lot of times a woman can say when, oh, what do you want out of a man? Right. And then it's like, oh, well, I want him to look this way. I want him to be this tall. I want him to dress this way. And I want him to, that is not necessarily, that's not really operating out of your femininity because operating out of your femininity is what you're going to attract and what you want to receive. You can't really attract, like if you, do you want to attract somebody that dresses a specific way? Like really think about like the quality of your lifestyle. Does it really matter and what you really want out of the relationship that you attract somebody who dresses a specific way? It doesn't. So when you are thinking, oh, he has to be this, he has to be this tall, he has to be dressed this way, that is operating inside of masculine energy. Um, because masculine energy is more of trying to control, trying to fit you into a vision of how things have to be. Whereas femininity is, again, attracting. It is attracting the desired outcome and getting my needs met of what I truly desire and what is going to make me feel safe, what is going to make me feel um, playful and open and what is going to be um, what I can receive. You know, femininity is receiving. And are you trying to receive somebody that dresses a certain way? Think about it. So knowing what you want. So try to find what you want. And I recommend like journaling. Um, I recommend, you know, exploring your feelings so that you really know what exactly it is that you're looking for to feel. What is the desired outcome? And then let go of how you're trying to create the scenario, right? So it's like, Anytime where you're too obsessive about how something needs to come together, um, no, I'm not going to say any anytime because there are certain instances where you need to be very specific and you need to be very um, like it has to go this way, right? But recognize that when you're doing that, you are going to be operating inside of masculine energy, which is totally fine. But if we're talking about attracting everything you want and how to get everything you want with femininity it is going to be putting out what you want and then allowing it to come to you however it aligns which again we can use the example from the concert I was not obsessed about who I was going to go with um where I was going to sit um nothing when I thought about the concert I just thought about how how much I was going to enjoy it, how much I was going to love to hear the music, how I was going to feel. I would think about like how I was going to dance. I would, you know, just visualize um, the way that I was going to feel and the experience in my body that I was going to have. And that is what drew me to it versus 
when I was thinking about, okay, I got to do it. Like, I'm going to have to drive up to Kansas City. I'm going to have to, you know, get these tickets from this person. I'm going to have to, you know, do it this way. And I'm going to have to wear this. And I'm going to have to, and it's like all of these things of like, I got to do it this way. I got to, this. It, it has to happen this way closed off the opportunity for the thing to actually come to me and it drew in <laughs> me getting scammed <laughs> uh, which I'm laughing about now but it was not funny at the time it's actually really terrible because I it wasn't just me it was my me and my friend um but it's really mostly my fault um and I just you know I hate that for us you know it's terrible experience <laughs> but now looking back on it it's actually hilarious because it was like this is what happens when you operate outside of your true nature. Girl, you were trying way too hard to force something that just was not meant for you to, it wasn't meant for you to go. You know what I mean? And if I had just accepted, it's, the, this is, I'm going to give you another example. Think about if you're ever, which I don't know if you all have had this experience, but I feel like you may have had this experience. If you've ever been like talking to a guy and he's not really doing the things that you would want him to do. But instead of you just accepting the fact that he's not doing the things that I want him to do, he's not treating me the way, way I want to be treated. Instead, you try to figure out how to get him to do the thing that you want him to do. You try to start figuring out how to manipulate him into behaving a certain way. And as you do that, you find yourself more disappointed, more discouraged, and feeling more like a man because... It is not your nature to try to force a man to behave in a way that he is not behaving. Your nature is to know what you want, recognize when something is not what you want, and remove yourself from the situation to make space for what you want. That is the essence of femininity is knowing what you want and saying no to anything that you don't want. And I'm going to give you all an example because right before I went to the concert, um, okay, actually, I'm going to give you all this example after I give you the last, um, tip. So the last step to using femininity to get every single thing that you want is going to be to, to stay open to receive regardless of how the circumstances look. So you have to not get discouraged by the things that are outside of you and you have to exist inside of your being and your body doing things that make you feel good doing things that align with the feeling that you're looking to get so back to how i was thinking about going to the drake concert i would like play the drake like play his music and i would be like swaying back and forth and i would just be like in my body feeling the feelings that i would have when i would go to the concert now had I not went to the concert, it still would have totally been fine because I still enjoyed the time that I listened to the music and I felt good in my body and it was free flowing and it was not forced or, you know, anything extra than out of the ordinary that something I would already be doing. And so, but me doing that allowed my body to be in alignment with the feelings that I was going to have, the satisfaction, the excitement the joy, the like literal, <laughs> just those good vibes. And even just the feeling of being surprised and not knowing that I was going to the concert and then being able to go and just that like fun, exciting, spontaneous energy. Um, even that was something that I was excited about of like, I don't know how this is going to come together, but I'm open to it coming into my life. And so you want to stay open to receive regardless of how the circumstances look. So a few days before um, the concert, over the weekend, there was this guy that was texting me like um, we were texting and we were potentially setting up a date. Um, I didn't care for the energy. So and I'm going to tell you why I didn't care for the energy. So he asked me like, oh, what do you like? Um, you know, what are your hobbies? What do you, you know, like to do? So I told him what I like to do, right? So then the place that he offered me to go was after I told him it was something I didn't want to do, it was like, oh, let's go have drinks. He said, let's go have drinks or something. And I said, well, I don't really, um, I don't really drink like that. Like, I don't, I don't go on like bar dates. Um, like I don't go out drinking with men. I don't know. Like, 
red flag, red flag, like safety issues, stranger danger. Like, no, thank you. I'm not interested. And so I said like, oh, I don't really drink, but you know, I'm open to the, or something, which could have been activity. It could have been, you know, whatever other thing you can come up with. I'm potentially open to it. So he ended up sending me the place. Um, <laughs> and I was like, no, I'm not going here. Um, and I declined. But prior to that, we were talking because he had went to, um, the concert. He had went to see Drake a couple days before that in another city. And so I was like, oh, are you going to go here? And he was like, oh, um, yeah, I got invited to like a box or whatever, whatever. And so my thing is, and I'm not saying it has to be this way, but I feel like if a man is interested in me and I express that I want to go to this concert and you express that you're going to this concert and your inner, his energy was like, um, he was like, oh, well, you know, if you get the opportunity to go, you should definitely go. And I, of course, you know, I agree. If I get the opportunity to go, I should definitely go. But it was just like the energy of it being like, yeah, I know that you shared all of these long lists of things that you like to do, your hobbies, what you enjoy in this conversation. But I'm still going to choose something else that I know that you said that you don't like or don't want to do. So I end up declining, right? But in the moment of him being like, oh, you know, yeah, you should definitely go if you get a chance. I was like, okay, now I could have took that as like, this is probably my last opportunity. Like who else is going to take me to go see this? You know, cause well, for you all who don't know, I'm not like, I'm in kind of like an isolation mode. I'm not going to lie. I have not been, um, super, um, engaging with me over the last couple months. Like I'm really not in like a dating phase. I am in a diamond phase. I am in a enjoying myself, um, enjoying the winter, enjoying, um, my relationship with God and like following the path that he has for me. Um, so the idea that some man was going to take me to this concert wasn't even really something at the forefront of my mind because I haven't really talked to any man. So, so I could have felt the desperation of like, oh no, like, you know, this is the first person I've been interested in or uh, potentially interested in letting t take me out somewhere. Oh no, like this is my last opportunity. But I didn't feel that way. It was just like, yeah, no, you're not my vibe. Um, I don't like this energy and I'm not going to continue to talk to you. And I said no to what did not align with me. Um, and that left space for me to end up going to the concert the day of, um, literally it was like, oh, I'm going to the concert literally the day of, um, and I went with my friend. And so that is just goes to show you what I mean by stay open to receive regardless of how the circumstances look, because, had I switched my energy to like, oh, no, I'm not going to be able to go to this concert and like, oh, this is going to suck. Drake is in St. Louis for two nights. I can't believe I didn't see him for either night. I could have went on a tangent on like how and like threw a hissy fit. But the reality was is that it would be nice to go to the concert. But if I don't go to the concert, it's not really going to change my life very much. And it just means that that was not in alignment with what I need to be doing at this time. It doesn't mean I'm never going to see Drake in concert, which I've seen him before. I saw him the last time he was in St. Louis. So it really wasn't like a, you know what I mean? It was like, if I attract it, I attract it. If it comes to me, it comes to me. But me being in my feminine energy, me knowing how to say no to something. Because had I even said yes to the date with the guy, that would have put me in a place of just accepting what anything that's offered offered to me, which is very much desperation and is very much not a feminine place to be in. It's like, I don't have to accept anything that I, that is not absolutely exactly what I want. And even in me going to the concert, at no point was I like, well, where, where are we going to sit? What are the, nothing. I'm not, I don't have no questions. I am here to enjoy, to embrace this opportunity, this blessing, this, you know, wonderful opportunity to go somewhere that I wanted to go to. I was not trying to micromanage anything. I was not trying to nothing. I was just grateful that I had the opportunity. I was excited to be going and the outfit ate. Like, oh my God, it was so cute. And fun fact, the boots that I wore 
before I knew that I was going to the concert, the boots that I wore for the panel, for the Black Love panel, were the same boots that I wore to see Drake five years ago. What is it, five years ago when he was here? Five or six years ago, the last time he was here in concert, I wore the same boots, not even knowing that I was going to be going to the concert. It was like such a random thing, but I just was like, I needed some boots to wear my outfit and those were the best option. I only had like two other boots, but they weren't really great with the outfit. So I was like, okay, let me wear these boots. And it just so happened that these same boots that I wore the first concert, I ended up wearing to the second concert. And so that's just kind of like a little energy thing, I guess, Um, which I'm not really sure I don't, if I really believe, like, I don't know if things hold energy and it's like that helped me to manifest or attract it. Um, I genuinely think that me being in my feminine energy um, and being open to receive whatever um, good things were going to come to me is the reason why I was able to receive. Um, it naturally fell into place. Exactly. And that is the essence of, hey, Miss Deanna. Oh, my God. I'm so glad that you're on. Um. But that is the essence of feminine energy is allowing things to naturally fall into place because you have to think about even in like a relationship, right? Anytime you're like, so a man is going to pursue, right? He is looking to put you into position. He is looking to put you into this place in his life for this vision of his life that he has. Um, a man that's serious about you, of course. So... When he does this, he is in his masculine energy. He is going to go get you. He is going to pursue. He is um, controlling the scenario. As a woman, you being in your femininity is going to, one, allow you to connect with the true essence of him and how you feel and how he really treats you. But it's also going to prevent you from pushing him away because when you're when you have desperate energy that repels the thing the very thing that you truly desire um because that masculine energy is like the masculine energy is going to um push the push the masculine energy away and so you think about when women are like in relationships with a man and they start being like you need to marry me and like i'm t <laughs> i'm tired of um <laughs> being your girlfriend i need to be your wife that almost never, like, I would say nine times out of 10, 10 times out of 10, because even that one man that is going to propose, he's probably just going to give you a ring so that you can stop pressing him. And then the relationship is not going to end up going where you want it to go. Anytime a woman is like trying to force a man to do something or trying to like almost bully him or that usually gets her the opposite outcome that she wants versus when women utilize or in their feminine energy it's like hey I'm letting you know that this is what I desire and when he doesn't meet your needs you flow on out of the situation and if he's truly the man for you he's gonna come and get you again because he's going to come and get you because that's what ma masculine energy does while feminine energy it feels it expresses and if it is not in alignment it flows and it flows away on up out of the situation. And so that is also something that I just wanted to note is like not forcing, not trying to be in control, not trying to um, bully and, you know, none of that. I am open to receive. Now, if you want to really like a I want one like an affirmation and something to continue to remind yourself if you start to feel like desperate for anything start saying to yourself this is what I desire but my heart is open to whatever God has for me or you or you know my heart is open to receive like that's something I say all the time my heart is open to receive like it's open to receive whatever my desires are. I'm open to receive those desires. If somebody's offering me help, I'm not going to tell them no. I'm going to be open to receive the help. I'm going to be open to receive opportunities. I am open to receive um, whatever the next phase. It is surrendering. Oh, that was another thing. I think that was the last thing that I had um, 
to I wanted to touch on because when we talk about femininity, that's kind of also I wanted to touch on like relationship wise, how we talk about like a woman submitting to a man. So submission is essentially surrendering. It is allowing like. Of course, you you submit to the right man, a man who's in order and who's proper. But when you have a man who is in his masculine energy and he's healthy and he cares about you, you can let go. You can submit. You can surrender. You can let go of that desire to dictate to him how things need to be and trust that he will create an environment that is um, conducive to how you need to be led and how you need to feel and where your needs are met. And that is where the idea of submission and femininity kind of connect. And I just wanted to touch on that because I just thought it was something that was kind of important. So that is my last um, tip, my last note. Um, I hope that you all... Um, we're taking notes. I know it was kind of, that was just like a general overview. I'm thinking about doing a YouTube video with like more detailed step-by-step -step directions. But honestly, the stuff that I told you, um, those things are going to be so beneficial to you. I'm telling you, like just, I'm telling you from October to February, the shift that I have made, which I would say that for the most part, I have utilized femininity in this way before, but sometimes you get out, you kind of get out of your body and that, like, that's what it is. You get out of your body and you get into your head and you start to like, let the masculine, masculine energy, um, overwhelm you. And I have not done that recently. Um, I haven't done that in a long time. Um, which a lot of that comes from healing myself from survival mode. Um, a lot of that comes from, again, not really being, um, in the energy of men, really being in my own energy, um, and not even really being in the energy of like the public, really, like I have really been in isolation mode and that has helped me so much to really fully deep down, get in touch with my, the essence of me. Um, and the more that I do that, the more feminine I become and the more I get <laughs> literally everything I want. Like, I get, I be getting everything I want in life. Um, and it'd be so, it's so effortless. That is what I love about femininity is like, I made a post the other day. Um, and let me know if you guys have any questions or sorry, not, not guys, you're not guys, you're babes. Um, let me know if you babes have any questions in the comments before I end. But I just wanted to say, I made a post on Facebook yesterday and it was like, you know, so many women are trying so hard to prove that they can do what men do that they don't like you don't even get the benefits of being a woman. And the benefit of being a woman is that one is so many benefits, but just the essence of being able to attract and allure the things that you desire into your life. Like, I can give you so many examples. I don't know if you guys have ever seen like um boomerang, but it's like you see boomerang when when the lady like um oh, what is her name? Robin Gibbons, I think, when she walks in and it's like, oh my god. It's so many times where you can see like a movie. Look at a Merlin Monroe movie. Look at something with Diane Curl. These or Beyonce, it's like Beyonce is never like she never has this energy of like y'all gonna listen to me. You know what I mean? Like even when Jay-Z just stood up, that was very masculine energy. It's like, yeah, I'm about to check y'all. Whereas Beyonce rests in her femininity, which is why she constantly receives and receives and receives. She receives Grammy. She receives success. She receives a loving husband and kids who love and honor her and want to be like her. And the love of so many people and it's because she's not trying to force herself and I'm going to give you an example and I even hate to give this example because I genuinely love Nicki Minaj like I love her I've been a fan of her since I was in high school right but even in that like her being more of a masculine presenting woman is like it's always this like you gotta respect me you gotta you gotta you know it's always this forceful energy of like trying to force people to give her the credit that she truly deserves. Whereas 
Beyonce is not forcing nobody to give her acknowledgement. She's doing what she's doing. She's putting out her art. She's resting in her femininity, being creative, allowing, you know, things to flow and allowing herself to go where she needs to go. And she's not holding on to anything she did in the past. You never going to see Beyonce ever talk about Sasha Fierce again. She's not going to bring it up. Even the Renaissance Act 1. She didn't move on so quick from Renaissance Act 1. And that is the essence of femininity. It is flowing. I'm flowing from here to here, baby. And if you're not, <laughs> if you're not in alignment, I'm going to leave you where you, it's so many people that are like, oh, I love Renaissance Act 1. I don't like this new stuff. And it, she's not worried about that. You know why? Because she is flowing on into wherever she needs to be and whatever feels right for her. And I think that we need to take more lessons from not just Beyonce, but feminine women in general of like, we need to be willing to flow on through and, and into wherever we're going because these outside things don't make or break you. Sasha Fears did not define Beyonce, nor did Beyonce self-titled, nor did Act One Renaissance, nor is this new country, um, whatever she's doing with the country stuff. Like, this is not define her. This is a moment in time and an opportunity and just a part of the flow and her femininity as she explores all that the world has to offer for her. And that is how you attract the things that you truly desire is to be open to explore whatever life has for you because life has so much for you. And it's so many things that we be thinking, oh, this got to happen this way. Meanwhile, the, the way that it's going to happen truly for you and it's going to be best for you is something that you could have never even imagined. And it's going to be better than that thing. It's so many things I could look back on and say, oh my God, thank God that things didn't happen the way that I wanted them to happen. Thank God things didn't. Had I not been scammed by the guy <laughs> for the Beyonce tickets, I would not even have this um example to give to you um, to help you on your journey. You know what I mean? So that happened exactly how it needed to happen. Um, in retrospect for me to now be able to deliver this message to you in such a, I hope it was a really clear way. And you got the comparison and you can see like the difference in what happens when you allow your femininity to lead you versus <laughs> allowing your desperate masculine energy to lead you. Um, so yeah, that is going to be, Fancy Girl Cocktail Hour, February, what is today? February 19th. Um, make sure you send this to a friend um, or sister or mom and make sure that you turn on your post notifications so that you don't miss anything. I have a YouTube video coming out tomorrow. You know, I do a couple videos a week. So let me know if there's certain type of videos you all want to see more of. If there is anything that you want me to like any topics you want me to cover, anything that you want me to go over in more depth. And if you're interested in the topic of femininity, I have a couple of videos. Um, one is um habits of highly feminine women and the other one is um i think things that you have to stop doing to be in your feminine energy um so i recommend watching both of those if you enjoyed this topic tonight um thank you babes so much for joining i am about to read and go to bed and get me some rest so thank you so much i love you babes i hope you had a cocktail and i hope you enjoyed and I will see you babes in the next one. Bye.